Have some pizza, sweetie. Uh, you know I'm lactose intolerant. I know, I just need you to stop talking. <laughs> Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Big Bang Theory moments that gave us secondhand cringe. A colleague of mine did her graduate thesis on the fungus that grows on improperly sterilized manicure implements. <laughs> Well, don't tell me that's not girl talk. For 12 seasons, The Big Bang Theory made us laugh, made us cry, and for this list, we'll be looking at the times it made us cringe. Those awkward, embarrassing, did they just say that moments? Which of these cringeable moments stands out for you? Leave us a wonderfully awkward message in the comments. Number 10. Are you ready for some football? When Penny doesn't invite Leonard over to watch football with her and her friends, he feels left out and decides to learn about the game in order to fit in with her sports-loving gang at the next gathering. And we have to give him credit because he does learn about football in a relatively short amount of time. Intentional grounding. Totally. Yeah, that completely was a forward pass, which they threw intentionally incomplete to avoid loss of yardage or to conserve time. The problem is, Leonard's knowledge is all very technical and rulebook-based, which when spouted out loud, can sound embarrassingly awkward. Look at that! The Oklahoma coach has thrown down a red flag indicating he's challenging the ruling on the field. <laughs> Hope he's right, because if he's not, it'll cost him one of his three timeouts. Penny even has to confirm to all her friends that her boyfriend is really smart. Nice meeting all of you. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, that's my boyfriend. He is really smart. Number nine, Sheldon makes a friend. In an attempt to befriend Kripke so he can get time on a computer at the university, Sheldon dives headfirst into the ins and outs of making friends. What is this? It's a questionnaire I devised. I'm having some difficulty bonding with a colleague at work, so I'm doing a little research to better understand why my current friends like me. Unfortunately, while there are self-help books for pretty much everything, the only ones he finds on making friends are in the children's section in the bookstore. There, Sheldon runs into a child that he innocently starts to befriend, oblivious to the outward appearance of what he's doing. Hey, maybe sometime you and I could go see monkeys together. Would you like that? Okay. Sheldon, what are you doing? Thankfully, Leonard takes note of the situation and gets him out of there as fast as possible. What's your name? Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. I'm your new friend, Sheldon. No, you're not. Let's go. <laughs> we were really hitting it off. Uh, don't look up those cameras. Number eight, Penny and Leonard pretend dating. I see you met my dad. Oh, good. Context. <laughs> Come on in, buddy. Take a load off. Oh, gee, Dad, Leonard can't stay. He just dropped by to say hello. Thanks for stopping by, sweetie. I'll see you later. <laughs> the first time Leonard meets Penny's father is when they're technically broken up. However, her dad doesn't know that because Penny's told him they got back together to make him feel better about her love life. Penny now needs Leonard to keep up the ruse until he leaves. Whatever, will you please just play along until my dad leaves? Hold on, do you actually want me to deceive your father with some sort of sham play acting and kissing? Because I'm good with that. Now we totally recognize that Penny was the one who created the whole predicament in the first place. But with that being said, watching Leonard take full advantage of the situation with such gusto, especially by laying long, extensive kisses on his ex and necessary, can be a little uncomfortable to watch. <laughs> Oh, friggity frack, not this again. Number 7. Amy's First Slumber Party Over the course of the series, Amy Farrah Fowler wonderfully comes out of her shell, but in her early appearances, she's just as static, abrupt, and socially awkward as Sheldon. Maybe even more so. Well, maybe you can join us. I'll ask Penny. No need. Penny and I are very close. <laughs> you are? Yes. In fact, our menses are synchronized. In this season four episode, Amy experiences her first ever girls' night slash slumber party with Penny and Bernadette. Absalon hath kissed her nether yea, and Nicholas is scalded in the torta. This tale is done, and God save all the rota. <laughs> While Bernie appreciates Amy's recounting of Chaucer, the evening gets pretty uncomfortable when Amy tries to join in on girl talk, goes too hard in a pillow fight, pushes Penny to talk about Leonard, and tries to kiss her. Hey, Amy. Look, I'm sorry I got so upset. I just... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> What are you doing? Don't worry, I'll avoid the nether, yeah, yeah. Number six, Alex and an egg salad sandwich. When Sheldon's assistant Alex flirts with Leonard, Sheldon feels the need to sit down with her and express his disapproval with her actions. What did I do? 
You don't know? Oh, you poor dear. Your ovaries are squirting so much goofy juice into your brains, you don't even know which way is up. This would probably be an awkward conversation to have for most people, but for Sheldon, the awkward ante is raised by the factor of 10. Sheldon's inability to completely grasp the situation or empathize with Alex at all leads him to quote his father. I'm not unsympathetic to your plight. My father used to say that a woman is like an egg salad sandwich on a warm Texas day. <laughs> and while his father may have provided him with some words of wisdom when he was a child, these ones are anything but. Sheldon might be surprised that he gets called into HR, but we sure aren't. And just yesterday, I led her away from a life of sexual promiscuity by making her look at pictures of disease-ridden genitalia. <laughs> Number 5. Howard and the Robot Hand Howard is a brilliant engineer, but as he himself has said, he's also a horny one. You're joking. I'm a horny engineer, Leonard. <laughs> I never joke about math or sex. And it's those two aspects of his persona that gets a robot hand stuck while wrapping around his… well, you know. In a supremely awkward moment, Howard has to call Leonard and Raj to come help him with his experiment that had gotten out of hand. Actually, in hand, but you know what we mean. When Winnie the Pooh got his head stuck in the honey tree, his friends all grabbed onto him and pulled and pulled. You do what you want, I'm not touching another man's honey tree. But because things need to get more awkward, they take a little trip to the emergency room. We know doctors and nurses have pretty much seen it all, but that doesn't make Howard walking into the hospital half naked, being gripped by a robot hand, any less embarrassing. What is this? It's a robot arm. Where's the rest of the robot? I only built the arm. Cause that's all you needed, right? <laughs> Number 4. Raj's Bernadette Dreams It's bad enough that Raj writes poetry about Howard's girlfriend, rhyming Bernadette with clarinet. You're kidding! <laughs> I found poems you wrote about her. Very disturbing. Oh, Bernadette, please play my clarinet. But it doesn't stop there. Raj has some fairly elaborate dreams involving him and his best friend's girl. Not only does he end up with Bernadette in them, but his fantasies involve Howard going away or outright dying in order for that to happen. Look after Bernadette. Of course, of course. Now, when you say look after, you mean... <laughs> Sexually. It's sad knowing Raj wants to have a girlfriend so much that he has to conjure up elaborate scenarios, including a Bollywood-style dance number. You are my heart. My universe. You are my heart. My universe. My universe. Bernadette definitely doesn't want to play Raj's clarinet. Number 3. Howard's Pickup Techniques the show's resident horny engineer seems to spend all his time thinking about girls, and yet his ability to woo them is a combination of awful, laughable, awkward, and inappropriate. Penny gets the worst of it, given she's around all the time. May I say, Penny, not a lot of women could look as hot as you do with such greasy hair. <laughs> And eventually, after one especially embarrassing flirtation, she has to burst his bubble and hurt his feelings. Wait a minute, this isn't flirting, you're serious. <laughs> flirting? You think I'm flirting with you? I am not flirting with you! No woman is ever gonna flirt with you, you're just gonna grow old and die alone! We're also not sure who cringes more, the audience watching him flirt with Summer Glau or Glau herself. And did you know the word pumpernickel comes from the German words pumper and nickel, which loosely translates to fart goblin? <laughs> no. I didn't. Maybe the worst of all is when he keeps leaving messages on Stephanie's machine inviting her to dinner, not knowing she's more interested in Leonard than him. Signing off each message with, it's Howard, adds even more feel sorry for him cringe to the situation. Listen, if you're free Friday, maybe we could have a little something to eat at my place. My mom cooks a hell of a brisket. <laughs> Let me know. It's Howard. Number 2. Howard and his second cousin If I could speak the language of rabbits, they would be amazed and I would be their king. One night out in the desert, Howard, Raj and Leonard unknowingly eat some psychedelic cookies and end up sharing some very personal thoughts and secrets with each other. Turns out Raj wants to rule over a land of rabbits and Leonard hates his name. I hate my name. <laughs> it has nerd in it. 
Lenner. But maybe the biggest reveal of the night is the fact that Howard lost his virginity to his second cousin. It was my Uncle Murray's funeral. We were all back at my Aunt Barbara's house. Our eyes locked over the pickled herring. We never meant for it to happen. The second aspect of it might knock the cringe level down a point or two, but that cousin part is still there front and center. And his two best buds can't stop bringing it up. And she was my second cousin. <laughs> <laughs> You're a real douche. <laughs> Who cares? You slept with your cousin! <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Leonard hits on an FBI agent. His new flirting technique is more awkward than confident. You pop, sparkle, and buzz electric. <laughs> I'm gonna pick you up at eight. Show you a night you will never forget. 30 under 30 jerk, when celebrity and alcohol both go to Raj's head. Welcome to the Raj Mahal. <laughs> Very nice. Good night, Raj. No, no, wait, the evening's not over. Yes, it is. Seaman, made cringier and funnier because Sheldon doesn't realize what he said. So, what do you say, Sheldon? Are we your X Men? No. The X Men were named for the X and Charles Xavier. Since I am Sheldon Cooper, you will be my Seaman. I love you. Thank you. Maybe the worst time to hear those two little words. I love you, Penny. <laughs> Thank you. Miss California Quiznos, 1999. We want to look away, but we really, really can't. I want to tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to really, really, really be Miss California Quiznos, 1999. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Raj and Penny, The Morning After Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God! Waking up after a night of drinking naked in your ex's bed with one of his best friends is, shall we say, uncomfortable? At that point, all you want to do is just get up and quietly get out without anyone noticing. This never happened. Do you understand me? <laughs> really? Still can't talk to me? Unfortunately for Penny, that doesn't happen after her night with Raj. Instead, the hungover pair walk out of the bedroom and right into the bright lights of the living room as they come face to face with Leonard, Howard, and Sheldon. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> it's, it's not what it looks like. <laughs> What does it look like? The loud gasp you can hear from the studio audience is the pure manifestation of cringe. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.